Yeah, sorry, I'm not Rene Ulrau. Rene Ulrau just handed in his PhD and after that got ill, so uh, last week, uh, unfortunately. And actually, uh, we would have made uh, a presentation together, but uh, in this way, uh, this was not possible and I just recycled some slides to give you an impression of what uh, a prehistoric archaeologist who usually does not deal with urbanization mm -hmm. Uh, uh, sometimes thinks if uh, he or she discovers very large sites. So such large, large sites exist uh, in European prehistory. Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, near Sevilla or around 3000 BC or 3300 BC. But they also uh, pop up, for example, uh, in the Ukrainian and Moldavian area in, in uh, societies which are labeled Tripolje and uh, research is talk ar around 3900 to 3700 <coughs> BC. So it's a relatively short story of maybe 10, 15 generations and then this kind of giant settlements or mega sites disappears again. And uh, at Kiel University, a research project uh, since some years uh, uh, is uh, installed in the collaborative, collaborative research center states of transformation dealing with this, uh, these uh, different sites. So as a prehistorian archaeologist, uh, I, not me, but uh, for me it was very important that there are many different concepts of urbanization. I mean, we are talking about uh, the oriental concept or the Islamic concept or uh, in, in uh, classical Greek about a different concept that the uh, European concept or the Hindi concept or an African concept. So many different concepts of urbanization and uh, what is a city or what is a town uh, are floundering around in the world. And I think if we uh, don't come up with a, how should I call it, Westernness or just European or uh, white European approach, uh, we should consider all these different concepts and uh, at least uh, for me it became quite clear that uh, within all these concepts uh, uh, it seems to be that idolized planning of towns or cities is at least uh, very important for uh, terminology which uses then later on uh, uh, the notion city or town or whatever. And uh, in my presentation, I would like to focus a little bit on, on, on three aspects of these different concepts. So, uh, okay, the agglomeration of population in cities as central places or whatever, the institu institutionalization of traditions within these huge places, uh, and maybe the centralization of power, which might be uh, uh, a mean which is taken over within such uh, uh, huge complexes. If we look at, at European prehistory or proto-history between, let's say, 6000 BC and 500 uh, BC, and if we map uh, the biggest sites which are known in relation to population reconstructions, it seems to be quite clear that uh, at least before 1000 BC, the, the, the figures from the Near East which with 10,000, 100,000 and more inhabitants in, in, in one city, for example in Uruk, never were reached in, in European prehistory, that uh, in Scandinavia, in Central Europe, in Southeast Europe, uh, for example, we are dealing with population figures below, let's say, uh, 2000 inhabitants. Uh, there might be one exception, and this is the exception I think uh, you will talk about later, uh, and me also, this North Pontic region where, where, where the gathering or the uh, living of uh, up to 10,000 people, for example, uh, uh, might existed for this short period, and uh, reaching these uh, numbers here from, from Near Eastern, from the Near Eastern area, and uh, it's probably a political decision which was taken over by these people uh, to, to uh, uh, end up with this agglomeration again and to be like a footnote in history without any, how should I say it, uh, innovative uh, uh, <coughs> approach to, to further history. 
But nevertheless, it's very interesting, at least for a prehistoric archaeologist, we are getting into this area here uh, with up to 10,000 inhabitants uh, of these sites, around 3,700, 3,800 BC. It's in uh, our research areas on the one hand here in central Ukraine, <coughs> in Moldavia. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, it's nice because it's a kind of degrowth. For us it's nice, but for the people there it's very difficult. And uh, the, uh, in contrast, for example, to medieval cities or whatever, this are, these are the places, or this is a place, my next to which we excavate, and uh, uh, where uh, the geomagnetic uh, of the römisch germanische Kommission and also of Kiel University with 20 sites was a kind of eye-opener and confirmed uh, uh, Soviet uh, research, uh, uh, which already in the 1970s documented somehow this uh, big sites by uh, geomagnetic methods that was never reached and never recept, uh, uh, recepted uh, in the Western world. But this was confirmed by these uh, geomagnetic uh, results. And uh, if you look at, uh, at such a topographic map, these are 10 kilometers. These sites, they have a size sometimes of 1.5 kilometers of up to 360, 360 hectares in size. Uh, and uh, if we get a little bit closer, it's quite clear that, uh, for example, Maidanesta, Yankee, and some other sites existed contemporary uh, in a distance of 15 kilometers. But it's also clear, I don't want to go into detail, at least and that's uh, our uh, primary uh, research uh, result, the carrying capacity of this very fertile area was never reached. So it seems not to be the case that uh, an environmental problem was uh, responsible uh, for uh, later on the uh, crash of these sites. Okay, this is a geomagnetic view of, for example, Maidanetske with its different geo geophysical uh, features. Uh, it looks like an American uh, Wagenburg or whatever, or a hippie festival, and some people have a hippie ideology about this. But uh, these are houses. These are houses with rubbish pits, <coughs> sometimes of 10 meters in diameter and 4 meters deep. Uh, the amount of rubbish which the people left here is enormous. And uh, this, this, these are, if you excavate it, you can't excavate that. What, what, uh, what is necessary to do to excavate some structures? And then with uh, test trenches or target trenches to, to come up with uh, C14 dates or other dating materials uh, to uh, discuss, for example, the contemporaneity of this concept. I mean, it's a concept which is clear visible uh, of these different rings of houses with this, these rubbish pits where this immense material uh, of living there uh, uh, is a problem for us archaeologists because many teams don't analyze uh, these amounts of material here. We try to do that. And uh, it is quite clear that uh, we are dealing with 3,000 houses, for example, here in, in Maida Next, um, of uh, which, uh, for example, probably uh, 1,000, 2,000 uh, existed contemporary, so that we are uh, coming up with about uh, population <coughs> figures between 7,000 and 15,000 inhabitants. There is an empty space in the center. We did some trenches there, some sedimentological analysis. It's empty. So that's it. And uh, there are some rings. You could also discover some trackways and so on and so on. You also discover some ditches and you discover some wildlet houses or structures, enclosures, which are different from the other houses. It's a question, what kind of organization, what kind uh, of principle was behind such a, I don't know, town? No. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's not urban. Um, uh, it's agrarian. I mean, urban could be agrarian and so on and so on. But uh, it's uh, uh, our botanists and, and, and uh, uh, paleoecologists and osteologists, uh, we are dealing with a typical Neolithic uh, agricultural site here, only the size 
is tremendous and the excavation is uh, hmm, very hard somehow. Uh, we have now about 350 C40 dates from these different sites with the Bayesian approach. It's possible to say that these remains of the houses, in principle it's not necessary to excavate them because, because you have such nice models <laughs> which you could find there. But if you excavate there, it's fun and you could reconstruct really what is also visible in the models, fireplaces, relaxing areas in the houses. We are dealing with household economies here, with a clear waste system and so on, and uh, some communal activities, differences between the houses in respect uh, to the integration into subsistence production and that's my last point, more or less. Uh, also, <coughs> craftsmanship is visible there. There are these, uh, oh, no, it's three. I thought, okay. <laughs> uh, kilns, three channeled kilns were excavated by us here and are excavated now by colleagues uh, uh, from side to side. There are already, I think, about 25 of these kilns now excavated which uh, are very elaborated. You comp could compare them with uh, kilns in, in, in Germany, for example, in the Römische Kaiserzeit, or in the early uh, medieval period. Uh, this is not the household production. That's a different kind of production. And uh, within Meiler Nest, uh, there are some indications that a kind of quarter uh, was possibly, uh, or at least a kind of centralization of this uh, uh, fine ceramic production in these kilns. So uh, that's a kind of tendency. And how to govern such a place? So to make it short, there are these kinds of enclosures or mega structures, <coughs> they are called. They are here in these public spaces. And they are known not only from these big sites, but also uh, from earlier sites, uh, which are uh, 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 which had a more dispersed uh, settlement pattern. They probably uh, link somehow <coughs> quarters within this. Oh, this one slide missing. Doesn't matter. They probably link special quarters within this mega structure, but. Beside this kind of uh, archaeological evidence, uh, here also in this uh, communal area, it's uh, quite clear. We are dealing with different decision processes and uh, different uh, identities there of the people. I don't want to go into detail here, but uh, there is no indication of a central institution, at the moment at least, uh, uh, it seems to be that that's the big difference, for example, to the development uh, in Mesopotamia, in contemporary Uruk, where you end up with these public uh, places and temples and the decision to have a state, to have a bureaucracy, to uh, come up with all these uh, nice uh, uh, things we have to deal with nowadays. Uh, they didn't want it, and uh, around 3700 BC, uh, the whole site was left. It was an agglomeration of people, of 10,000 people, without any other satellite sites or smaller sites in the hinterland. Uh, and uh, they decided again to live then in a dispersed uh, settlement. And uh, I mean, prehistoric times are times when the, the division between uh, profan and ritual life is not so clear and every activity which isn't economic or political activity is at the same time a ritual activity and uh, you could see this in the uh, background uh, of a, a painting or photo montage uh, within <coughs> Legetzini in the museum. Uh, uh, it's rising the fires up to New York, but in Majdanecke itself, uh, two days there is this uh, talk, talk, it's the degrowth situation, which might be nice for hippies, but which is really very, very difficult uh, for the people who live there now. Uh, and, okay, I have the wrong, wrong presentation. That's it. Uh, it's all published in a volume uh, 2017 here of the 
uh, European Association. Thank, Thank you very much.